Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Mindful Eating Clinic podcast. This particular episode is another of my mindful meats. And as you will know, if you've listened to any before, these conversations are quite varied. I talk to people who generally just have professional lives around helping others. It's all about well-being. Sometimes it's mindful living. But actually, if you think about the mindfulness in general, it can apply to all sorts of things, how we live, how we eat, how we exercise, how we think about ourselves. And today I am joined by a very special guest because I've been following her journey for a long time on Instagram and I'm delighted to introduce her to you. Um, And her name is Imogen Tinge. Hello, Imogen. Hello. Lovely to be here. There she is. And for those of you who are listening, she's got lovely sun streaming through the window. She lives in Sussex in the south of of England, for those of you overseas. And she has um, what looks like a Monstera Deliciosa cheese plant. Yes, correct. Quite sticking in her (laughs) ear, but quite close to that. Um, So what is Imogen going to talk to us about? Well, Imogen is going to talk to us about her experience with eczema with acute and chronic eczema and specifically topical steroids and topical steroid withdrawal which I have to admit I didn't even know was a thing until I saw Imogen's posts on Instagram. She very bravely put her story out there and lots of images Her experience has led her to make a particular career choice, which I'll allow her, let her talk to you about. Um, And I think that's really enough for me. So let's hear what Imogen has to say. So Imogen, do you want to introduce yourself and just really start wherever you would like? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for that lovely introduction. Um, Yes, so my name is Imogen. I have had chronic eczema throughout my whole life, I would say, Um, starting from a newborn and all through childhood until it amassed as um, covering my whole body, basically. And I had a a troubling few years relying on steroid creams um, to basically allow me to go through life day to day and to function easily. Um, until it got to the point where they stopped working. Um, and so tell us tell us what age you were mm. then and what age you are now, so we can have some sort of yeah. timeline. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll start, start from the beginning properly. But um, mm. yes, so when I was a baby, I had eczema on my face uh, quite severely and um, it troubled me all throughout my childhood. And in that, in that time, my mum coped by... Um, using emollient creams and kind of all the all the standard creams you're you're advised to by the doctor. Um, I had allergies as well, so I was allergic to animals and dust. Um, everything would kind of trigger my skin, and I'd I'd flare up. Um, so it was hard work uh, for me and my mum, I'm sure. And mm-hmm. uh, she rarely used steroid cream. I think she only used it a couple of times when I was a child. Um, <clears throat> do you think she was aware of of the complications with it or it was just just a choice of hers do you think that she didn't use yeah. it so early on I think just a choice to be honest I'm, I mean I've spoken to her about it since and I don't think she she certainly didn't realize the repercussions of of using it and how severe it could become mm. um just how reliant you you can become on these creams so I think for her it was it was more of a choice of um, using the emollients and and that that side of things, which is I'm very thankful for actually because mm. it could have been a, could have been a lot worse. Mm. Mm. Okay, yeah. so so the emollient cream applied topically, and I imagine there was mm-hmm. things that you had to be bathed in as well. Am I right in thinking? You know, yeah, so you, yeah. Yeah, so you can use um you can use emollients in in the bath and stuff, but yeah, we used to have to kind of add add various things to bath water um just to soothe 
soothe my skin. Um, I used to wear a an all in one suit, which had kind of cuffs over the hands and things, so I couldn't scratch as well. Mm. Um, so yes, lo- lots of various various tools. <laughs> and those those emollients are they, to your knowledge, are they what what will, would be recommended for babies? now I mean have things moved Mm. on at all or or is it is it still really that's that's what's suggested from from my experience and from what I see now it's it's definitely still the same so e45 for example um is a very popular one and there's apriderm as well um they are still used but they contain parabens and they contain um certain things that now if I try to use it it actually hurts my skin so Gosh, um, interesting. Quite interesting actually because yeah. I'm just thinking you know there there I'm sure will be some parents listening mm. who have who have young children who have who have babies who have older children who have eczema yeah. my own my own son Harrison had it as well mm. you know it's 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 quite it's quite common so listening to what you're telling us as we go through your journey will be really helpful for them, for them to try and make perhaps different and better choices for their children. Yeah, yeah. I will say, you know, what if it works for your child, if it soothes them, then just stick with it. You know, mm. there's no there's no point kind of um, changing things if, if it's working, because it can mm. be so individual. Um, so, yeah. So there you are, however old, yeah. three, four, five, in milky mm. baths of... <laughs> emollient yeah having your nails cut to within an inch of their life so you don't scratch oh, yourself yeah. do you yeah. do you have do you have memories of what that was like do you have any recollection um I have specific memories so for example um if my eczema would become infected um it only happened happened a couple of times and um you know I'd have to wear kind of tubey grips over my legs and over my arms and things and and there was a point where I had an an impetigo infection and I couldn't walk properly and it was on my legs um so my mum had to push me in a pram and I I was eight years old and I remember thinking like I I was really embarrassed because I was like I'm too big to be in a pram yeah of <laughs> um, course yeah and I couldn't I couldn't join in with uh PE at school and things and it, so that those are the memories that kind of stick with me mm. um obviously as well as you know I've always loved animals and being allergic to them as a child really upset me mm. um so anytime we'd go out I mean I loved horse riding um and then yeah it was just just being restricted from those things I loved <clears throat> excuse me um mm, mm. those are the things that I remember actually yeah yes mm. so so then so then how did life how did life with eczema uh, sort of progress and and develop into the next stage and maybe that's the steroids or maybe we've got somewhere in between before we get to the steroids and if it is the steroids why were they then the choice mm. that you or your mother made yeah sure so um as I got older the eczema actually did calm down on its own um so through my teenage years <clears throat> it was lesser I didn't find myself reacting as much to animals for example um so I was able to actually start training to be a vet nurse um which was really great and then that so that was throughout my teenage years and then it got to the point where I was 18 and I moved out of home and moved in with someone um and it was that change of environment from a very eczema friendly environment let's say because of all you know um using a specific laundry detergent keeping a, a really clean environment eating healthy so going from that to not such a clean eczema friendly environment which happens a um, lot with young people. It, absolutely, you know? yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, you know, for me, that wasn't the thought going on in my head at that time. You know, I didn't think, oh, I'd better think about my eczema. <laughs> I was eighteen and wanted to have fun, and and of yeah, course, wrestling, so. yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, so at that point, it was then, uh, maybe a year after that happened, that um, the eczema started to become incredibly severe, mm. and 
I started to use steroid creams regularly um, okay. and it was from there. Yeah. So with hindsight then, because I'm sure this will be interesting for perhaps any young adults who have eczema at the moment and they're about to head off to a student uni house, which in my experience are perhaps not the cleanest. Sorry, no <laughs> offence meant to anyone who keeps their scrupulously clean. But as you say, it's not really the priority, is it? You know, that's what growing up is about. So, so it was a change of um, physical environment in terms of what things like cleanliness and yes, was it was it also lifestyle changes? Do you think that exacerbated yours? Absolutely, yes. Um, so <laughs> it was uh, consuming more alcohol. Let's be honest, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, going into to a house which maybe wasn't the cleanest. Um, dirty carpets things like this so so they're obviously kind of a hotbed for dust and spores and things and if you have eczema this can really be a trigger um so that was that was something for me and um yeah sleepless nights and and just generally not looking after myself mm -hmm. I think and yeah that would that would be it I think for me and also though you know there was more stress and and I think people forget about stress. Stress is a, a, can be a very big trigger for mm. eczema. Um, mm. In hindsight, I realise that now, but at the time, yeah, all these yes. things kind of amounted to, to more eczema, unfortunately. Of course, yes. And mm. so so the steroids, is that something that was advised by a doctor or you just knew mm -hmm. that that was a, an option? No, so I didn't know about steroids at this time. Um, that was something that was recommended by a doctor. So yes, I just went to the GP. Um, she took one look at me and said, "Yeah, we need to get you on, get you on some steroid creams." So in the beginning, it was just on my legs, um, and then the more I used the steroid cream, the worse I would find my eczema, which is always it's confusing to because it's so contradictory. Mm. Um, but yeah what I know now is that my body was kind of it was adapting to it so I needed stronger ones so so in terms of the treatment then using steroid creams mm -hmm. is, it, is it then accepted that when you start using them it sort of has to get worse before it gets better so was it a question of just keeping going and thinking well you know I've been told this is the right thing to do and therefore I just have to wait until it starts happening is that mm. Was that the so, process at the time or? No. So what happens is your, your the skin will very, very quickly get better. So with mine, within three days of using the steroid cream, I was eczema free. Right. And so I thought, my God, this is this is incredible. This is fantastic. Mm. And then because you're not or because I wasn't addressing the causes, mm. um, the eczema would then flare up again. And so I'd use the creams again. And then what I was finding was that it was taking longer and longer for my skin to heal once I'd applied the creams mm. um, and quicker for the eczema to return as well. Because um, I think we, we need to remember that eczema is a symptom. It's not, you know, it, it's it's appearing on your skin and it's your body's way of telling you that there's something internally going wrong with your immune system or, or with your gut health, etc. cetera. So, um, yeah, because I wasn't addressing those triggers for me, the eczema was returning. Yes, but it's a manifestation, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. It's actually the traffic light that says, hello, you mm -hmm. need to be looking at something something else. But of course, we can, we can yeah. understand, of course, completely that anybody, if they find something that starts working, you know, and they can they can go out without out eczema on their arms, face, legs, and feel a yeah. little more normal. Of course, why wouldn't you embrace mm. it? Um, Absolutely, yeah, and, yes. and you do, especially at that age, like a young age, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. you want to grasp onto anything that works, and yeah. So, Absolutely. it started to get worse, and yeah. the cream started to not really do anything at the very least and at the mm -hmm. at the worst then it it actually wasn't it was actually making it worse was it yeah so so um I started on a, one the lowest potency and then I progressed on to the the next one and then the next one because I kept going back to my doctor and saying look 
the the cream is now not effective you know I was using it in the morning and then by the end of the day it would be back again the eczema um and so yes I just kept progressing through the potencies of steroid and then it got to the point where the GP said I think we need to start you on prednisone which is an oral steroid um, so really try and tackle the inflammation internally mm. and that just set off all these alarm bells in my head and I thought okay whoa 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 you know I've just used all these different creams nothing is now touching the sides why should I now start to use something that's internal for me for me actually taking it internally seemed so much worse than applying it topically mm. um you know it, it just really yeah that that's kind of when I thought something's just not right here and mm. and mm. you know she she said to me you can't go through life without using these creams to manage your eczema so it was a real horrible decision for me really at that time Gosh, yes. But I can see that yeah. it's a bit like you were you were climbing up this ladder, weren't you? So the first step, sex, and the, then mm -hmm. you get to this this rung that says now you have to start taking a pill. I think in my mind would also be, so when this stops working, what's next? You know, yeah, am, am I actually going to get to a point there where there will be no more rungs left on the ladder? Nothing, you know, there won't be any other mm. options for me then what do I do? That's what I think would mm -hmm. worry me thinking about your you know, story. And so how old are you yeah. now at this, this point where you suggested to take the tablets? So I was 22, I think, 21, 22. So I'd, yeah, been using these creams consistently mm. for the last few years. Mm. And I, I think guess. you'd had to, is it about this time that you'd had to step away from the um veterinary nurse role yes yeah so I so I'd gone through um I was trained to be a veterinary nurse I I had worked in various different animal places so I worked on a, a farm park for a while um and at this point I had a job as a surgical auxiliary nurse in a, a huge orthopedic referral animal hospital um <clears throat> which was just it, uh, renowned throughout the world this this guy who owns it and um you know it was it was a dream job but, but you but can I was, tell everyone who it is go on tell us oh uh, it's Noel Fitzpatrick the super vet the super vet <laughs> the channel four super vet yes yeah. yes yeah um yeah so I I worked there and and but at this point I was covered head to toe head to toe in eczema and it was just you know every single day was a a real struggle um and it was other things, you know, I, I had insomnia, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't sleep and and it was just, it was starting to become a kind of whole body, like syst systematic mm. kind of, yeah. Um, really and awesome. debilitating. Absolutely, yes. Mm. Yeah, I was, mm. yeah, fatigued all the time and, and yeah, and emotionally as well, you know, don't want to leave the house when, when you're covered. No, no, <laughs> quite. So, so the eczema now, at this point mm -hmm. is the worst it's ever been you think yeah yes mm. yeah um right yeah. so there's a big <laughs> that's the story a big holy moses moment yes yeah. that says okay i'm 22 what the flip am i going to do about this so mm. where on earth so people listening may be in a similar situation where on earth yes. Do you start? Tell us about the practical. Tell us about the psychological, you know, how you found the confidence and that because this is just huge, Imogen, really huge. Yeah. yeah. So it was I had a friend who had who knew some about something called topical steroid withdrawal. And I'd never heard of it before. And she pointed me in the direction of a website, which is um called itsan it's i-t-s-a-n dot org and they're basically a, a a charity who um help those going through topical steroid withdrawal and I went on their website and I saw all these all these stories and all these testimonials and um about people in my situation and I just thought oh my goodness this is this is me and they they all had histories like lifelong eczema um 
they'd been through the same process as I did with steroid cream and I just you know basically what they'd done is gone cold turkey Mm. stopped using it and gone through a withdrawal process um to get to the end and I just thought you know what this is this for me seems to be the the path that I have to take um because I couldn't fathom a life you know a, a lifelong journey of taking steroids it just wasn't yeah. No, no, quite. And so how did you feel when you saw all these pictures of other people and read these mm. stories? Uplifted and also terrified. <laughs> I think it was it was very empowering. And it was also it was really it was a comfort to know that other people had also really questioned mm-hmm. their GP's advice and also, you know, advice from family and friends as well to keep using the steroids. Mm-hmm. Um so yes it it was a huge relief to to read about these other people who yeah who'd been through it and who knew knew what to do I guess yeah did they have some success stories on there as well so was there some inspiration to say oh absolutely it is it is possible because I imagine that was that was essential at the time because you were so terrified of the of going through the process Yeah. yeah and it was you know being faced with this reality of what I thought the reality was that I would have chronic eczema for life whether it be on my you know all over my body and actually seeing these people at the end of their withdrawal process with normal skin um it was yeah absolutely huge for me to think that actually I don't have to live with this there is a way life after steroids a life after eczema yeah you know yeah Yeah. right so Tell us what cold turkey entailed then. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Okay, so yes. it's... Deep yeah, breath, so, yes. Yeah. What you can do is you can taper off them, um, which a lot of people do. But for me, I just I just threw them all in the bin, um, all the steroid creams. And withdrawal is a horrible... It's a horrible process. I mean, it's never... It's not easy for any kind of withdrawal. Um But what will happen is because you have essentially suppressed your inflammatory, anti-inflammatory, sorry, system within your body with your steroid usage, when you stop using the steroids, your body doesn't know how to cope with the inflammation. And um, what that means is that you will have an influx of inflammation um you can have all sorts of symptoms so I for example my insomnia got a lot worse um my skin did get worse before it got better um you know you have swollen lymph nodes um rashes everywhere your your temperature fluctuates it's kind of it's a whole body onslaught of all these inflammatory symptoms um and it's a very long process it can take months to years for your body to start kind of kick start back into knowing what to do um but it but it always will because the human body is always trying to go back to that balance and find that homeostasis and it 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 does take a while because these things do and and quick fixes normally aren't the fixes that we're after which is obviously what steroid creams are exactly um, it's the it's, yeah. it's it's the plaster isn't it it's the symptom symptom versus yeah. versus cause thing and I think and it, it just brings to mind if w- when I'm working with my clients in the in the world of 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 eating difficulties and yo-yo dieting mm. the diet is like the steroid cream isn't it yeah whereas what we need to do is to address why the relationship with food is so difficult unpick that Mm. that can be troubling and takes a lot longer a bit like your cold cold turkey but it's absolutely necessary to then say okay this is where this is what's been affecting me this is where I am now how can I change my psychology and improve my nutrition to actually then not have any of these symptoms any more to not need to diet to not have to put the sticky sticky plaster on 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 top and so in terms of how long it takes I mean this might be a how long is a piece of string question possibly but is Mm -hmm. is that very personal to people does it depend Mm -hmm. how you know the sort of level of steroids you've been you've been applying is there any 
connection between yeah. how long it takes and that yeah so it is it is as you said it is extremely personal um I think there is a connection between the length of usage and the length of withdrawal I think that's generally <clears throat> the consensus between people going through withdrawal um however for some people I mean it can take a few months and for others I know there are people still going after five six years so um it's it is very difficult um but it does it forces you to look at yourself and look at your triggers more I think I think I know myself so much better um having come through this because as we were saying instead of just putting the plaster over it forces you to think okay what is going on here what am I triggered by what am I reacting to mm. um and you address those underlying issues whether it's gut health whether it's kind of allergies and dust and and all sorts um yeah and it, it makes you incredibly strong actually yes yes That's absolutely yeah. and so during this process I think you moved back home because the relationship came to an end sort of at the same time didn't it so you so you went back home to yeah. to mum's um clean not that I mean I don't want any, anyone to think you're living in squalor you know you weren't living in squalor but relatively <laughs> speaking <laughs> but relatively speaking to but to go back to you know regularly chain sheets and clean clean carpets that that must have helped I guess as well when you went through that process yes yeah absolutely so um around the one year mark um so I'd kind of suffered through all the worst bits of withdrawal I'd say um and then around the one year mark I yes I moved back home with mum and um that really that's when everything started to to really improve and I think that for me kind of really hammered home that my cert my personal triggers for eczema are things like dust things like a uh, specific laundry detergent um as you said kind of clean environment regularly cleaning um my alcohol consumption obviously went down a lot as well so that's that's something that for me really really helped and um yeah my stress levels as well so kind of those, those three things really environment mm. uh, alcohol and stress were, were what I know to be my biggest triggers because alcohol is is quite a well-known inflammatory factor for many people isn't yeah. it but I think what I like about what you're saying is that you're stressing that it is very personal and mm -hmm. I guess for some people it could also be about their diet potentially it could be it could be more about stress and and it's basically ab about having that holistic view um yeah to say what are the possible triggers going on here and I suppose trying to relatively systematically change a few things to see whether they improve what mm -hmm. I think is quite interesting is that when you move back home there was a dog there wasn't there at the time yes and yeah. and that didn't that didn't seem to um be a negative factor when no, you know that you it's... had been um particularly sensitive allergic to to um animals so yeah absolutely when you were just sort of giving me a few facts when we were chatting earlier I thought oh that's that's really interesting so I was kind of thinking well that presumably then suggests that the body was calming down was spying mm. more of its balance so that mm -hmm. some of the previous triggers actually were not as strong anymore because generally the body was in a better better place a, a a more a more stable place would that be would that be right from my my layman's observation yeah yeah absolutely so I think and also at this time I'd started to um look into um sharing a horse of my own as well so I was starting to test the boundaries with horses and mm. I think what it's told me as you said is that maybe I had an intolerance before because there was all this inflammation going on in my body I was reacting to things that actually, if I had been, you know, in equilibri equilibrium and, and healthy, they wouldn't cause me to react. So maybe it's not a true allergy. It's actually just a bit of an intolerance because my, you know, my uh, threshold, if you like, is is so low. Yes. And yeah. aren't, aren't horses 
one of the most allergenic animals in that if if you're going to react to something you're probably going to react to a horse isn't that I mean I think I read that somewhere I don't know whether that's true (laughs) <laughs> they are yes but it's all it, it's it, it's the hay and the, and the dust and all sorts that come with horses I think as well but um yeah the protein that they have because it's it's the protein that you are allergic to in their fur I believe um so yes yeah it's, interesting they're, they're definitely a common one okay wow so so life's sort of opening up then more isn't it for you oh, absolutely at, this, at yeah. this point um and so you went from, and anyone can find your story because your your journey through is still on an Instagram account, mm-hmm. isn't it? I know you've got yeah. two, and we'll talk about the second one in a minute. But so people can see, and as I mentioned in the intro, you very bravely share pictures there and also on your new website that you went from that to this beautiful, clear-skinned woman that I have sitting in front of me. Um, <laughs> and and so how long how long did that take for you so that was all in all the whole withdrawal process took about 18 months okay. um and yes as you said in in that time one of the best support systems I had was the Instagram community mm-hmm. and I would share yeah all my progress pictures and and others were doing the same there's there's a whole topical steroid withdrawal community on Instagram that are just it's huge isn't fantastic. it and yeah yeah it is yeah it's it's incredible um so yeah so they were with me all throughout the, the journey the timeline um and yep I was sharing all my skin pictures and everything and uh yeah so after about 18 months 18 months to two years I'd say um my skin was back to normal it's normal but well more than normal for me <laughs> more than normal for you but you know normal in the sense that you still get the odd spot like the rest of us tell me you oh do, yeah please. yes oh that's that's good, <laughs> that's good. Um, so then at this time so tell us when your your thinking starts going hmm a bit like me with my journey of yep. of fixing my chronic disordered eating mm-hmm. your mind goes maybe it's not enough just for me to have got there yeah tell me yeah. about that so um at the time that I started to heal I was I was working in an office job um and I was made redundant and I thought okay what am I gonna do basically with my life um (laughs) and I thought you know what what is my calling and I I thought I've you know I've just been through this whole experience um and in that time researched the body and healing and um gut health and allergies and and you know all these things that I had lived with and was trying to heal my body through um kind of that holistic approach um so I yes decided to study as a dietitian and I went back to college for a year and then um at university so I'm currently at this time in my last last semester I'll be qualified in in three months yes Um, you are three months away aren't you yeah and it's been three or four years it's a four-year degree Mm. yep um so I have had a placement year at two hospitals in the middle and um yes so so this is kind of yeah this is my my route into helping people um whether they have food allergies or even um just with eczema you know but dietitians aren't just about nutrition and dietetics obviously that's that's a lot of it but we do look at a holistic approach as well so lifestyle um stress management mental health all those things that kind of accumulate into a disease or a condition um so yes and then hopefully gonna go on to do a master's in allergy studies and um yeah that'll be my my speciality really I just I can't as much you know when I first healed from steroid withdrawal I thought oh gosh I want to I want to just put it all behind me but very quickly realized that actually I'm an advocate for it I'm a success story Mm. I you know I have all this this existing knowledge and and want to go on further and and acquire more about the human body and and food and allergies and 
I'm a perfect candidate to help other people really because I you know I've lived it um and I understand how it can feel when you are let down or you feel let down by doctors and GPs um and I think there is an element of distrust there that you do you know you acquire between yourself and doctors and and you know the medical community so by becoming a medical professional I hope to kind of you know bridge that gap and and let people realize that there are there are people you know healthcare professionals out there who understand and who have been through it and um, are here to help really absolutely and you're 28 now aren't you 28 yeah so I'm just thinking wow how how fantastic you've got all this time ahead Mm. of you to be able to as you say help people with that and I think that's what struck me when I when I found you on Instagram because by that point you'd got to the point of looking at at training yeah and just what you said everything that you that you said is is exactly where I got to albeit not quite 30 years later but hey it doesn't that's fine (laughs) um to actually say in order to really be able to help some, I mean, not exclusively, but I think if you can say, I know what it's like to binge yeah. eat, I know what it's like to be stuck in a in a dieting roller coaster, I know what it is to be body checking every five minutes, you know, all of these things, and to try and then help help unravel somebody else's head is easier because I know what it's like, and also you know the pain because it must have it must have been so painful f- for you skin wise and the psychology and the emotional stress and you know I think there's quite a quite a synergy really between what you've been through and your decision and mm. and what actually prompted me because most people at that time of their life are actually thinking right when am I drawing my pension but you know <laughs> it was for me it was such a strong feeling that I couldn't just enjoy my happy life with food. I had to try and help others find exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. Yes. You know, and I, I always help people if people message me on Instagram or something. And I think it was, it was the sheer number of people who'd messaged me saying, thank you so much for sharing this, your, your personal experience and, and, you know, or, or what would you do in this situation? And, yeah I just thought you know what this is I love I love helping people and this is something that I know a lot about because it's my it's my experience it's been yes. my life so. yes and now you've got all the science to back it up I mean yep. also your degree is very broad yes I'm sure it's been pretty full-on um <laughs> very very sciencey and you know because mm-hmm. you have to understand all the all the scientific pr- principles behind all of all of these things but um I know you went a bit quiet didn't you on in on on Instagram while you were studying which is very sensible yes speaking from a mother's perspective I would say yes <laughs> definitely um but now you're very much up and running aren't you and you're thinking about about the future and how mm-hmm. you can help people and you've got a new a new website so we're speaking yep. in in spring 2023 and you've got your new website ready um yep. and from from the moment of being able of being being qualified you're 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 up and up and running I guess aren't you to yes people yeah absolutely yep so I've got the website the website is itdietetics.com um if you find me on Instagram my Instagram is imogen underscore skin nutrition at the moment and I will and I will put all I'll (laughs) I'll I'll put all the links in in the blurb for this anyway so that people can find you um and then they can they can get in touch with you and they might be asking for themselves they might be asking for for their children and yeah. someone that they know um and of course it's not it's not you're you're going to be able to be working at the same time as doing your masters aren't you so it's not yes, like absolutely people don't have to wait for a, a year no, um, no. and is that something that you'll mostly do face to face um uh, most likely it would be virtual online oh great um, so you can still still do it you don't have to be in the room with someone no 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 not at all no okay. um it can all be over zoom um yes and, and again it doesn't have to be 
to be skin issues you know I, I, as a dietitian my my the spectrum of conditions that I can kind of work with is is huge and vast so and mm. I you know I'll always always be open to to having those conversations with people whether it is kind of weight management or or high blood pressure or you know anything really gastroenterology just yeah all these things um, anything that's all... not quite right yes. we can then look at nutrition as a starting point yeah absolutely yeah I think yeah that's it and and I think um you know if you do have eczema and you you don't have a food allergy so if you don't have cow's milk allergy or or anything that doesn't mean that you can't see a dietitian you know it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be allergy related um there are still so many other broad avenues that you can take with nutrition to just try and make sure your health internally is optimal optimum oh, optimal yep and um Both. Either one. <laughs> and and yes and that that will shine through you know through your skin so and as I said earlier it's, it's not just diet we can talk about the whole holistic approach um that's the beauty of, of being a dietitian really you know you're not stuck just talking about diet it's it can be a lot of things and um that's that's what really draws me to to working with people one-on-one -on -one and having those lovely long consultations is because you can really kind of <clears throat> get to know someone in and out inside and out and um really yeah help them in a holistic way absolutely yeah and this this holistic thing <clears throat> comes up with me quite a lot so one thing that comes to mind which I've been talking to a couple of people about recently is um negative body body image mm. and suggesting you know it's kind of gentle baby steps but actually suggesting looking at overall how they are living with work relationships their past history that a lot of that negative body image is more closely related to self-esteem yeah and their lack of self-worth rather than actually the physicality um, and that trying to build the self-esteem and to encourage them to celebrate their strengths and to perhaps remove some things in their lives which are not helping them feel good about themselves mm. actually makes the body image matter less. Yeah. You know, um, and I think from you, from from the perspective of people working with you, it's quite important that people understand more about the breadth of of dietitian work because I think a lot of us when we think dietitian we think oh they're in hospitals and they come around with a clipboard after you've had your appendix or your gallbladder out in a white <laughs> coat and they say right Mrs Smith you've had your gallbladder out you need to not eat these things that are that, that are very high fat yeah. thank you very much have a nice life yeah you know no, not, sort not of, the food police <laughs> exactly well at and also that sort of, you know, from from way, way, way back, this sort of stereotypical idea. But in fact, it's much, much broader. It's much more user friendly. It's much more follow through with someone from start to finish, isn't it now? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. If you work with a private dietitian, you can expect to have the, have the support there for as long as you need it. Mm. Um, and also, you know, if you do go through the NHS, you do. You do have that one-on-one -on -one support but obviously the the waiting lists are very very long mm. um which is yeah private dietitians you'll you'll as i said be able to have that support um whenever you need it which is is something that is just so important to just mm. have a professional ear to listen to you absolutely um, yeah. yeah and if they and and if it does happen to be about eczema and topical steroid withdrawal then they have that added element of you having having been been through it yeah absolutely. oh Imogen well done you well done thank I, you <laughs> I say that not patronizingly but because, oh, no, no. You're the, because you're the same age as my children and I just think it's so brave and the fact that you're now going to use all that experience and all that intelligence that was it that was in there and hadn't quite found its found its place <laughs> it's now going to be used you know to to help to help people um and so I will put all the contact details on on the blurb um 
and people can find you on Instagram and they can contact you and I know that you're that you're going to be responsive to to anyone that chooses to do that absolutely and um I will just add on the website I I obviously write blog posts about nutrition um and skin and they are mostly related to eczema but um you know I've got a long long list of subjects and topics that I want to cover um and I post a new one weekly sometimes I'll have the odd break if if you know uni work just gets if there's a minor thing like a final year dissertation (laughs) (laughs) yeah yes my my very long dissertation does need to be finished at some point um but yes so I I try to keep updated with it all and it's just it's a really nice hobby for me to do really and it keeps me focused on um the skin side of things and uh yeah kind of doing what I can now before I'm qualified for the community and then obviously doing as much as I can afterwards as well afterwards yes well on that very optimistic note there you are sitting in front of me living proof yes for anyone that is in in that shall I shan't I what Mm. can I do yeah situation that there is light at the end of the tunnel there is clear skin there is yeah I'm eczema free and I have been for the last five or so years so yeah wonderful oh Imogen thank you so much oh thank you so much yeah it's been such a pleasure thank you thank you thank you for listening my listener thank you for watching if you happen to be on YouTube um whichever platform you're on please do follow the podcast or the um YouTube channel and then you'll get all my updates. I tend to do a couple of mindful meets a month. And then in between, I will head empty in a mindful moment and talk to you about whatever I might be thinking about in the area of mindful eating, disordered eating, non-diet approach to weight management, and all of those topics that you may well be familiar with. So enough from me for today. Thank you very much for listening and I will be back soon. Bye.